All right, welcome to the Straight Red Card. This is part two of the um, Saturday. We might put these up like really close to each other just to get Saturday over with. But a lot happened on Saturday with players that you might consider important, and we do too. So we're going to talk about all of them, um, including Jeremy Toljohn. So if you missed part one, that's where we covered Dest, Sergeant, uh, Anthony Robinson, Ethan Horvath for the weekend, Gio Reyna, John Brooks, Julian Green. You missed it. Go back. Watch that. This is part two. So part two, we're going to start with Jeremy Toljohn. Uh, again, 90 minutes for Sassua and in Italy. Again, not going to go into his ability to actually play for the U.S. I think it's been pretty established that he could if he pursued it and if Greg pursued him. And he is another option, who, who guy who can play left or right. Plays a lot better on the right. Um, Derek, real quick before we move on to the next guy. Yeah. Did we talk about Adams on the Friday game? Sunday. You can certainly revisit him if you want. Go ahead. Because he played 90, and he played well. Well, I was just saying, we didn't. it was a game over the weekend. We just didn't cover it at all. <laughs> That's true. It was on Friday, so it's not in the Saturday-Sunday thing. But they did win 4-0 versus Stuttgart. So, you know, Marsh over Marazzo. Um, both American managers. That was kind of a cool talking point. We got Adams Adams was being Adams. He's out there running that midfield. And Jesse Marsh is like, no, that motherfucker's a midfielder. He's not, not a right back. <laughs> so he's not even messing around anymore. He's like, he's right, he's not a right back. Um, and let's see if there's anything else important here for Friday. Um, I got my Friday report here. I mean, Taylor Booth played for Bayern 2 for 80 minutes, and we're keeping an eye on him. Christopher Scott played for 50 for Bayern 2 as well. Um, other than that, uh, Novakovic didn't play against Frosinone because he's injured. So back to Saturday, um, we got Luca De La Torre playing nine for Heracles in a eh, game. It was okay. It wasn't great. Uh, we got the Sonora brothers playing in Argentina. We got Joel playing 60 for Banfield. We got Alan, Alan Sonora playing 90 for Independiente. Those are two guys that nobody ever talks about, Brett. Why? They're playing a great league. It's the same reason why most people uh, outside of the Olympic qualifiers probably don't know who Johnny Soccer is. And a lot of people just don't follow the uh, South American leagues, period. Oh, I read some comment on Filippo's page. They're like, dude, I know you love Brazil. And that's why you cover Johnny Cardoso, but why do you keep sliding the Sonora brothers? <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I don't know why, but I'm not going to. And I don't think he's doing it on purpose, obviously. So, um, Aronson went 90 for Salzburg. Pretty good game. But yeah, absolutely. Had another, uh, another good game following that uh, Europa League. And uh, thanks to, to our U.S. men's national team videos guy on YouTube who started his show so I could watch all his touches again for the second time. It was great. Yeah, only got, only got, a, only got him on there. I was hoping that he'd have, now that he's back, I was hoping he had more people up tonight. Yeah. Uh, good luck, man. You know, <laughs> the thing about watching Aronson is even though I think, oh, he was so close to having a goal. Yeah, I wouldn't go off like, what, the top pipe? Mm -hmm. Oh, so close to being a goal. I just expect a goal or a couple assists from him every game now. I just yeah. do. And when he doesn't get one, I'm like, oh, come on. Come on. Full game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Durkin went 90 for OB. Uh, Got a goal. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Emmanuel Sabi went 90 for OB. Did I see Chris Durkin? <laughs> yeah. Durkin would rather be where he's at, I think. Uh, he was at St. Trude, and he went 90 in a loss. Um, Sabi went 90, as I said, for uh, OB in a goal. Lennon Gooch, 90 for Sunderland. We pretty much forgot about him. And then there are some guys that you want to keep on, uh, an eye on who are young. Uh, Devin Tanton uh, went 90 for Fulham's U18s. Got an assist. This is good news. You've got to keep an eye on these young guys. Um, Nicholas Giocaccini, still hated by his manager for whatever reason. And it wasn't that he kicked his dog or anything, but he only got 20 for Cayenne. I mean, we're getting to a point here where I think Giocaccini needs to think about leaving. Because yeah, he's getting so. he's getting butt, butt romped there. Like, he gets no time. And when he gets time, he gets time out of position. 
I think he needs to say, fuck this team. I'm out of here. But, you know, if he could, he would have. So he's not getting the offers. He, he could be uh, very much in a situation that Horvath was at a Bruges and just, just likes the city. You know? That's a stupid reason. <laughs> you're a fucking soccer player. You need to play fucking so- – you're a professional player. You need to play soccer professionally. And if you're just, like, hanging out on the bench for some Division Two French team that doesn't respect your skills and doesn't really know how to use you, get out. Give the fucking ma- – don't give the manager a middle finger, but get out of there, all right? It's, um, a, it's a tough situation to be in, though, because, I mean, obviously he's in French too right now, not really getting that many minutes. And like you said, if he does, he's getting played out of position, sort of like how he's out of position with the United States national team. But even then, it's not like he can come over and play for the Nats – and, uh, and, you know, make a name for himself internationally. But because if he is going to be playing out wide, there's a long list of depth there. If he's going to be playing in the center, there's still a pretty decent long list of depth there that he may, he wouldn't crack. So it's, just, well, it's, it's kind of a tough situation for him. He may just have to, you know, encourage a transfer to another second division team somewhere else probably, or first division in a lower league. At least with the Nats. He gets to cut inside a lot. Um, sure, when he gets to play. And the problem is, is coming up qualifiers, and we'll talk about this later, obviously. But I don't necessarily uh, – I don't know if he'll make – if he'll crack the 26. No, no. So. No, he's not. Um, and we'll get to that. Yeah. Matthew Hoppy went no time at all. He just rode Pine for 90. I guess Schalke are punishing him. Uh, or maybe they're just waiting for him to get back to health, or they're trying to sell him. I, I don't know. Say, they've got a, they've got a week to do so. Maybe that's the case. Maybe they got. Some yeah, numbers. I mean the well, fucking clock is ticking. Yeah, well, we we were following the uh, Everton one last uh, last uh, week, so maybe the uh, interest is still there, and uh, Schalke is looking at it, saying, "Well, we're really interested in selling him. We just want the right bid, but we you know want to play somebody else until then." You know, I don't know. And, and meanwhile, um. Schalke were stubborn and didn't play him. They could have put him in for like the last 20 or something. And they lost to Jan Regensburg. Um, and a guy who never gets any attention whatsoever, and I don't know why, I understand he's 29 or 30 years old. Jan George uh, played. He didn't play that much, but he played 10 for Jan Regensburg. He was like the core guy um, for them. He's a dual national. And now we just ignored him for like, I don't know, Six years. Um, Joe Enox, we're going down in lower levels of German soccer. He's an American manager. And Zwickau, who is the manager of, lost 2 nothing to Braunschweig. And then uh, there's this young kid that he is starting at center forward there. That's Zwickau in three Bundesliga, named Johan Gomez. He was in Portugal before. Uh, now he has moved, and he's playing three Bundesliga. He's a young kid. So he started him. He pulled him in the 50th. Um, but something to keep an eye on, a young player. Um, okay. And then I'm just going to run through a bunch, and we're going to be done with this segment. Yeah. Um, Marcel Costley, 90 for uh, Waldorf Mannheim. Uh, Maurice Malone didn't even get dressed for Augsburg. Uh, Mayo Corbaz, Corbos, 40 for Verl. Uh, Ken Gibson, 90 for Sonnenhoff. Um, Malik Sonogo back with the U19s for Union Berlin got 90. And then there are a bunch of players, young guys that are just got into Europe a year ago. But we have to mention uh, Sebastian Burke and Daniel Polufo, both uh, in the 18. I think it was Burke who got minutes for Unter Hawkins U19s. Then we got Lucas Tamares, who is in the Hoffenheim U19s, got 20 and a goal. Uh, Aiden Harangi got 20 for. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt's U-17s, uh, and then the rest. Shaq Moore, last minutes for Tenerife, and I'm not even going to mention the guys that play in Sweden. Um, and then uh, Tyler Boyd, now at uh, Rissa Sport, uh, got no time yet. Obviously, he just arrived. And awesome Amir, 24 lot, way down in the table as well. So that's it. That's part two for Saturday. We're going to move on to part three, which is Sunday. God damn, this seems longer than usual. All right. See you soon. Names. Also, <laughs> don't forget oh. to like, subscribe, and comment on every video. Don't forget that. Don't forget yes. That. All right. 
or Rapunzel. Or Rapunzel. <laughs> and we know where you live. Remember yes. we talked about that too. Yes, this is an era where that's possible. I can't <laughs> find you and punch you. <laughs> All right. We're not Just kidding. No. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. See you guys next time on the Stride right. Card. Thank you, Brad. <laughs>